Welcome to our lecture online. Here now we're going to talk about equations relating to sound. We have the pressure of a pressure wave or a sound wave, the velocity of a wave in air, and the intensity of a sound wave. Now B is the bulk modulus, K is the wave number, and A is the amplitude of the oscillations of the wave. So let's see what the units are, and of course pressure, we expect to see newtons per square meter. All right, let's try. First of all, the units of the bulk modulus is the units of pressure, because it would be stress over strain, and the units of stress are pressure, so it would be newtons per square meter. And of course, that's already the units we're expecting for pressure, so we would be done if these would cancel out. Let's see if they do. So we're going to multiply the times the units of K, which is the wave number, and if we, uh, Jar memory, k would be 2 pi divided by the wavelength, so it's 1 over meters for the units. And then the units of amplitude, that, well, amplitude, that would be the distance from the displacement of the wave or the air molecules from the equilibrium point, so that would also be meters. And notice that meters cancels out 1 over meters, and yes, indeed, this ends up being newtons per square meter which is the units of pressure. So that works out quite, quite nicely. How about the second equation? The velocity of sound in air is equal to the square root of the bulk modulus divided by the density of the air. Well, let's find out if that's the correct unit for velocity. We're, of course, expecting meters per second. So here we have the units of the bulk modulus. Bulk modulus, again, that would be units of pressure, newtons per square meter and then we multiply that times 1 over the density. Well, let's see here, 1 over the density, which is equal to kilograms per cubic meters, and the whole thing, we take the square root of that because we have the radical there. All right, we need to clean that up a little bit. Let's see what we get. This is equal to, well, newtons can be written as kilograms meters per second squared. And then we have over meters squared, so we put meters squared here. Here we end up with meters cubed in the numerator and kilograms in the denominator. And the whole thing would take the square root. So now let's simplify things. We have kilograms, cancel out kilograms. We have this meter, cancel out that meter. And this becomes square and this disappears. Then it ends up being meters squared per second squared. Take the square root of that. And sure enough, that ends up being meters per second, which is the units we were hoping to get, because that equation is an expression of the velocity of sound in air. So you can see that this is indeed a correct equation. It's the square root of the bulk modulus divided by the density of the air. And finally, the intensity of sound. Well, the intensity of sound is equal to one half the square root of the density times the bulk modulus times the angular velocity, or I should say the angular frequency squared times the amplitude squared. Seems quite complicated. Does that end up being intensity? Intensity, we would expect watts per square meter. So we expect to see something of this nature. Let's see if that is indeed correct. So let's look for the units. First of all, we have this portion here underneath the square root or radical symbol. Density is kilograms per cubic meter, and the bulk modulus is going to be units of newtons per square meter, that's pressure. And this whole thing is going to be to the one-half power because it's underneath the radical. Now next we take the angular frequency, and frequency of course is one over second, so angular frequency is also one over seconds, but we'll have to square that. And then amplitude, of course, is a linear measurement of meters, and we have to square that as well. So we end up with meters squared, like this. All right, when we simplify that, what do we get? Well, let's simplify this. And so that gives us kilograms times newtons, which is kilograms meters per second squared. We still have the meters cubed and the meters squared. That would be meters to the fifth power. And then here we have, and that's square root of that, and then here we have meters squared per second squared. OK, 
Okay, continuing, we can simplify that some more. So this would be equal to kilograms squared divided by seconds squared and meters to the fourth power. When we cancel out this one, this becomes meters to the fourth power. We take the square root of that and multiply that times meters squared divided by seconds squared. Beginning to run out of room here. Okay, now we can take the square root of this portion right here. So this would be equal to kilograms divided by seconds times meters squared and multiply that times meters squared divided by seconds squared. All right, are we getting watts per square meter? Hmm, that depends. We have per square meter in the denominator, does the rest end up being watts? Well, watts, let's try to work that out a little bit. So a watt is equal to a joule per second. And a joule is equal to a newton meter, so we end up with newton meter per second. So watts per square meter would have to be A newton meter per second divided by square meter. If we get that, we end up with watts per square meter, which is the units of intensity. So we have square meters already at the denominator. Now we need newton meters per second. Well, a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. And meters per second, well, let me work it out a little bit more. Let me show you what I have in mind here. So we can simplify this too kilograms meters per second squared times meters divided by seconds times meters or times let's see here we have second squared and seconds and a half and a meter squared all right so what I've done here is I've taken this and rewrote it a little bit different. I wrote it as kilograms meters per second squared. So I took one of the meters from the numerator. I have one more meter in the numerator. I have the second squared from here, the seconds from here, and the meter squared from there. So I have a meter squared right here in the denominator and a meter squared in the denominator. Newtons is kilograms meters per second squared. So this is Newtons. And then finally, meters per second, and it matches up perfectly. Which means what I have here is a half newtons times meters per second per one over meter squared, which indeed is equal to watts per square meter. And so you can see that this equation does appear to be correct if we simply check the units. So we have the intensity which should be in watts per square meter, is equal to one-half times the square root of the density of the air times the bulk modulus of the air times the angle of frequency squared times the amplitude of the oscillation squared. And sure enough, that gives us watts per square meter. That was a little complicated, but you can see that eventually you can make the units work out. And that's how it's done.